This is Valley News Live at 10. We begin with breaking news. Planned Parenthood in Moorhead will offer abortion services at its clinic if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade and North Dakota's only abortion clinic in Fargo is forced to close. The Red River Women's Clinic in Fargo has long been the only abortion provider in the state. Their owner has indicated that the clinic would move to Moorhead if necessary based on the decision of the court and state government. Tonight, Planned Parenthood said if that's not the case, they will begin offering abortions at their Moorhead facility so that women in the region have no interruption in services. In other news tonight, we're learning more about the six-year-old Minnesota boy whose remains were found in a trunk on Friday. Adam Duxter spoke to Eli Hart's foster family about how they're mourning the loss. I don't know how he always had a smile on his face. A memorial in the front yard of Nikita Kronberg's Randolph home. Now a tribute to six-year-old Eli Hart, who she says for almost a year became like another child for her and her husband. He was an amazing kid. He was full of energy, always smiling. He uh, so outgoing. He always wanted to befriend everyone. Kronberg had known Eli since he was born. His mother, who Lisa Thaller, cousins with her husband, Stephen. In January of 2021, concerns about Thaller's mental health led Child Protective Services to get involved and led to the Kronbergs becoming six-year-old Eli's foster parents for almost a year. I feared if she got custody back, that she would harm Eli, if not worse. Earlier this month, Dakota County court documents show, despite concerns about Thaler's mental health, living situation, and criminal history, she was once again awarded full custody. I instantly responded with, you know, this is a dangerous situation for Eli. You know, I fear for his safety if he is returned to her. There was numerous things that I had brought up that were concerning that I had noticed. Less than two weeks later, Orono police say they stopped a woman driving on a busted tire with a shattered back windshield. After noticing blood inside the car, police say they found a body in the trunk. While investigators haven't released the name of that victim or the names of the two people they've arrested since, family members say that boy was Eli. And an online jail roster shows his mother, currently held in Hennepin County Jail, on pending murder charges. At that point, I felt like I failed him. I keep looking at pictures of him and I keep, this can't be real. He's out there somewhere playing, having fun. Can't be real. Kronberg says now her biggest question is why? You want to blame one person. You want to put that blame on one person so you have somebody to be mad at. But it's a whole team. Adam Duxter, WCCO 4 News. Today, Eli's biological mother, 28-year-old Julissa Thaler, was officially charged with second-degree intentional murder in his death. All right, switch gears now, talk about the weather a little bit, and look at that very colorful sky, Hutch. Indeed, yeah, quieter out to the west in the Devil's Lake Basin as the sh showers and thunderstorms have exited our western counties and are now pushing into the Red River Valley into western Minnesota and... Well, they still did and uh, have had a lot of lightning. Look at this electricity from the sky. Hope, thank you. When the storms moved through the West Fargo area, they were noisy. They rolled into Grand Forks as well. Thanks, Marcus, for sharing your photo as well. Here is the progression of the storms out of the James River Valley through Grand Forks and Fargo. And now look at this. They're pushing into Northwest Minnesota. And I want to point out, we got Ada, Norman County, north through parts of Polk County. And here, moving into Thief River Falls and New Folden, you see this dark green band here? This is an outflow boundary. Out, so there may be some gusty winds pushing from west to east with this storm right here. If nothing else, there's going to be this ominous rolling cloud out ahead of the storm that's causing that fancy outflow boundary right there. Nonetheless, a little bit of lightning crossing over there near the Pembina area as well as just north of you in Ada. Here's a look at temperatures, 50s for most, as it's quiet for many of us. More thunder, and look at that. That was, the, Brittany called it the electric boogie woogie. I'll bet you it sounded like it too. Tonight, temperatures will slowly fall. Things will quiet down substantially now that we head into the evening hour. There was no severe weather tonight, but it was certainly something to look at, right? We'll have details of your hour-by-hour -hour forecast on a nice warming trend coming up our way here in a moment. All right, thanks, Hutch. 
An update now to our Valley News Live investigation into whistleblower claims of people getting water in their gas from a Fargo gas station. Dennis Johnson, the owner of Johnson Auto Repair, says he's seen quite a few cars come in with tainted gasoline in their tanks. He says cleaning it up is a big job. It can cost thousands of dollars. He adds, while most drivers kind of just have to trust that their gas is good, there are some warning signs you can look for. Most of the time you'll get um, engine performance, rough idle. Uh, your engine light can come on and, and start flashing because of misfires. And too much water will just pretty much shut her down. The Consumer Protection Division in North Dakota's Attorney General's Office says they have received four official complaints of water and gasoline from the same gas station so far. New for you tonight, an assistant basketball coach for Grafton High School is facing multiple charges for an incident back on May 12th. Brent Baldwin faces a felony charge of theft of one to $10,000 as well as a misdemeanor driving charge. Baldwin's next court hearing is on Monday. The Mapleton fire chief has pleaded guilty to driving under the influence following a crash that left a woman seriously injured last year. Kayla Cross, who also previously served as the assistant fire chief in Moorhead, originally pleaded not guilty, but has now changed her plea. According to court documents, she was cited by a West Fargo officer just before 2 a.m. November 13th after she was involved in a crash. Under the terms of the plea deal, Cross was ordered to pay a $500 fine. Fargo and Moorhead are right across the river from each other, but for the last year or so, police in the two cities have not been able to help each other much. Minnesota had a law on the books which stated when deadly force is used, it must be justified by the law enforcement officer. And the uh, departments in North Dakota didn't like that. However, a Minnesota judge has removed those last few words to bring the law more in line with other states. Line more on dash and body cameras and witnesses to justify a shooting. West Fargo police say its patrol division is now wrapping up training to allow it to take part soon in mutual aid once again. It's been a long time coming. They're ready to go. They're ready to resume uh, kind of operations as normal. So it's, uh, it's good for everybody to get back together. Meanwhile, jury selection continues tomorrow for the man accused of opening fire at a Fargo bar. Jury selection started today for 43-year-old Brandon Grant. He's charged with three counts of attempted murder, three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after he allegedly opened fire at the Bismarck Tavern last summer. He was arrested after a month-long manhunt. Video footage of the bar showed a man approaching Grant with a phone and then punching Grant several times. Multiple people joined in on this fight finally broken up by bar staff. The documents say Grant then pulled out a handgun and shot three men while they were being escorted out of the bar. Police say recovered 13 bullets from the scene. Jury selection is expected to last about a week. Opening statements began today in the murder trial of Gregory Ulrich, the 68-year-old is charged with murder, attempted murder, and setting off explosives in a deadly shooting spree inside a health clinic in Buffalo, Minnesota last year. A medical assistant was killed. Investigators say he targeted that facility because he was unhappy with the care he received. The clinic's now back open with a memorial and a space to reflect and heal. Police are still searching for people involved in a burglary Saturday near Grigla. Officials say the door to an outbuilding was forced open, setting off an alarm. When the property owner went to check it out, officials say the suspects ran away. A short time later, deputies were patrolling and found 48-year-old Sean Martin of Red Lake walking along the road. While questioning him, they say they learned he was one of the men involved in the burglary. Deputies arrested Martin and booked him in the Beltrami County Jail. Jamestown police responded to a couple of break-ins overnight. They say around 4 this morning they got a report of a man trying to break into a home at the Northland Estates in northeastern Jamestown. Shortly after, they were sent to a home along 19th Street Northeast. That caller said a man broke in and pushed him to the ground. When police came, the man locked himself in a bedroom in that home. They negotiated with him for about an half an hour and a half before he surrendered. He was taken to the Jamestown Regional Medical Center for treatment.